Hey everyone, so today we're going to do something very different. We're going to control my Tesla Model 3 from a Profound.js browser interface. The Model 3 is Tesla's more affordable mass market electric car, but what I find interesting about it is that it's more a piece of software than a car. It can, for example, drive itself, it can park into tight spaces automatically for me, and all of that is done through software. Now the car is always connected to the internet and I can even remote control the car through a Tesla provided app. And guess what? That app simply uses REST API and JSON or JavaScript object notation to communicate with the car. So that means I can create a Node.js or Profound.js application to talk to my car. So here's an interface that I've built. You can see that I'm able to retrieve things like battery range. I can get the temperature both inside and outside the car. And I can do things like honk the horn, flash the lights, lock the car, unlock the car, open a charge port, open the trunk. And if I were to get really creative, I can probably do a lot more. But let's start with the basics. Let's see if we can honk the corn from, the, uh, from an IBM I command line. As you can see, it worked. So how did this happen? Well, let's take a look at the code. So the very first line is simply a reference to a JSON file that contains information about my car. So let's take a look at this JSON file first. So as you can see, it has the auth token and the vehicle ID. This is simply the information that I need to authenticate into my car. Uh, of course, these are not my real values. In the real application, I have the actual auth token and the actual vehicle ID. Once I have that, I'm able to call any of the Tesla API and pass that information along. Now I'm using a package here called Tesla uh, JS and what that allows me to do is call any of the REST API direct, directly from Node. I'm further simplifying these API by using pgs.fiber.wrap that allows me to call any of the API without providing any callbacks so in a top-down manner. So I get this Tesla object and then this Tesla object then has lots of different methods that I can use and here I'm using I'm simply using the honk horn method and passing in the car information so this is a very simple example a one-liner to honk the horn um, on my Tesla now let's move on to the more complicated example here we're doing more we're retrieving some information displaying it on the screen and allowing the user to actually click buttons to do various actions uh, but the concept is very similar. We're calling, in this particular case, the vehicle data method, and that returns all kinds of data points about the car. So there are about 100 different pieces of information that it returns, but we're only using just a couple pieces. So we've got the battery range that we're retrieving and putting into a field. This is a screen field, so that we can display the battery information in miles. We've got the temperature, inside temp and outside temp, and then we're using the latitude, and let's scroll over here and longitude to build up a map URL that we're going to display on the screen. Now the screen is going to keep on displaying or executing until the user exits out of the screen and if they click any of the buttons like honk we're gonna honk the horn if the flash button is pressed we're gonna flash the lights and so forth. Now all of this works together with a JSON rich display interface so you can see that we're referring to it right here okay so let's take a look at how this was put together so of course this should start looking very familiar because this is the design of the screen that we were looking at earlier and we have things like the battery field we have the inside temp field the outside temp field and then we also have this iframe here now the iframe is used to show a map of where the car is located and if we look at the URL field or the URL property you can see that it's just connected to our map URL field that we were constructing in the node.js code uh, and of course we also have these buttons over here and each one of these buttons if you look at it has a response field and that response field is going to then be communicated to the Node.js code and this is how the Node.js code knows which action to take. So a few of you asked me if I can actually do this in an old 5250 terminal. So a, a lot of people are under this impression that IBM I is an older legacy system and they can't wrap their head around the fact that Profound is doing all these modern things with it. Well, the truth of the matter is that your 5250 interfaces, they certainly look dated, but that's just because your applications need to be modernized if you're still running them in 5250. But the IBM I system itself is actually very modern and very capable. So I hope you found this interesting, and now you can see that Profound.js can easily talk to a Tesla Model 3.